Let's finish this chapter by describing the process of ventilation. Okay, remember the difference. Ventilation is just moving the air in and out of the lung. Respiration refers to gas exchange. We have external respiration at the alveoli and uh, internal respiration at the peripheral tissues. This is ventilation. And ventilation consists of two phases. We have inhalation and exhalation. When inhalation is when, or, or inspiration is when we move air into the lungs, okay? We, in, during that moment, just think about it, okay? What are we doing? We're making the thoracic cage bigger and with uh, the, the, each lung is filled with air, so we're increasing the transverse and the anteroposterior diameter of the uh, thoracic cage. So the, whole, the lungs are holding, which are closed containers, only connected, the only uh, tube that is mm, uh, filling with air, these lungs, is the trachea and, the, 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 and its branches. So the air flowing through the trachea and all the bronchial tree fill with air this lung, this lung expands, that's inspiration. When it recoils, remember, lungs has a, a, a lot of uh, elastic fibers. So when these elastic fiber, fibers recoil, it moves passively, it moves out of the lungs all of this air. And that moving, that phase when you move air out of your lungs, that's exhalation, uh, exhalation, <laughs> the phase of uh, exhalation of the uh, ventilation, of the ventilatory process. Now, for this to happen, we need the contraction of the inspiratory muscles. Let's get through. So what happens first? Well, the diaphragm, remember that the diaphragm in rest has this dome-shaped uh, or this dome is dome shaped. And when it contracts, it just moves down and gets flatter. That itself is increasing the diameter of the thoracic cage, right? At the same time, the intercostal uh, muscles, we have two sets of intercostal muscles, uh, the external and the, well, the external and the internal intercostal muscles. The external intercostal muscles, what they do when they, they run in this direction, as you can see in here. So when they contract, they contract in this, uh, in this direction. So they can elevate the ribs. And when they are elevating the ribs, again, we're increasing the uh, diameter of the uh, uh, thoracic cage. So these are the two main inspiratory muscles. The major, the most, the prime mover is the diaphragm. But then we have also the external intercostals. This is a normal inspiration. If you have, if you want to force your inspiration, you give, it's not a passive or it's not a regular inspiration like the ones that we, we are doing today. Now, now we are exercising or, or you just want to take air forcefully. You can also use, look at my neck. What are you using? You're using your uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle, you're using deeper than that your scalene muscles and your pectoralis minor are used as well to uh, force these inspiratory movements. So the thing is that now we are increasing, like they're showing you in here, they're increasing the transverse and the anteroposterior diameter of the uh, thoracic cavity. With that, what we need, that we're not going into this detail, that's for a physiology class, but we need a differential of pressure to, to always uh, be in there between the pleural cavity and the pressure inside of the lungs. Okay, the pressure inside the lungs, remember, the lungs are connected with the trachea in here, and out here we have atmospheric, atmos, atmospheric pressure, and that's an H. Um, so we need a difference between the atmospheric pressure, the pressure of inside the lung and the pressure inside the uh, pleural cavity for this movement to occur. Again, that's 
the content to be discussed in a physiology class. In here, we're just going to discuss the mechanics. So air, we're contracted the, the diaphragm, diaphragm is flat, external intercostals, they lift the, uh, the ribs more. We increase the long, uh, uh, the lungs are stretched and we increase the lung volume now and now the air has the the pressure in the air has dropped so remember in a diffusion uh, mo uh, particle moves from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration atmospheric pressure now is higher in air higher than the pressure in the lungs because they they increase the volume and then the air flows in okay inside the lungs and that is inspiration okay now expiration the now we're going to move that air out of the lungs is a passive movement or is yes it's the passive phase of uh, ventilation in here we need the contraction of the muscles in here in the expiration what we need is that relaxation actually of the muscles so when the diaphragm relaxes it pushes up the uh the, the lungs okay the external obliques uh relax and the ribs move down and also we have if you have if you want to force the this expiration you can contract the internal intercostals you can contract your abdominal muscles the external and the internal oblique and the transversus uh, abdominis you can contract that and make this a forced expiration now uh, as we are relaxing these muscles in a normal expiration or contracting accessory muscles in a uh, forced expiration what we're doing is just getting back the uh, inter um, the thoracic cavity to its original uh, of measurements okay we're uh, moving the thoracic cavity from this diameter to this diameter can you compare that um, and that now we're reducing the volume of the lung the air now in this reduced space it increases increases above the atmospheric pressure in here and then that causes the air to move from a place of a higher concentration to a place of a lower concentration in the atm atm atmosphere and that's how expiration occurs now who controls all of this our brain so in the medulla oblongata in the brain uh, stem right here the brain stem is where we find the respiratory center these are the uh the pacemaker of the respiration it sends uh, nerves which nerve is this one innervating the diaphragm muscle this is the phrenic the phrenic nerve which innervates the diaphragm muscle so it can contract and in here these are the intercostal is that hard the intercostal nerves innervates the intercostal muscles but remember are the, also the nerves that innervate the abdominal muscles down there so this uh, medulla oblongata is also under the influence of centers in the pons in the hypothalamus where you know we're dealing with emotions is uh, also controlled by cortical uh, the cortex uh, in the cerebrum so we can consciously modify the uh, respiratory rate and it's also controlled by the or is influenced by the information sent uh, from several chemoreceptors so chemoreceptors remember our receptors are detecting or monitoring or sensing uh, chemical changes in this case these chemoreceptors are located as you can see in here in the aortic arch and right here where these what artery is this one the common carotid artery branches into the uh, internal and external carotid artery now these chemoreceptors as blow blow as blood flows through these blood vessels the chemoreceptors are monitoring the composition the chemical composition of blood if the blood gets uh the concentration of in blood the 
oxygen concentration in blood drops or that carbon dioxide concentration in blood um, uh, increases or the blood gets too acidic, that, will, that sensory information will be sent, putting everything together, will be sent through sensory fibers, visceral sensory fibers, to the medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata, the brainstem, coordinates all of that and can signal that through the phrenic nerve and the intercostal nerve can signal, now this is somatic, system can signal these muscles to, um, to contract faster. So these chemoreceptors influence the medulla oblongata to increase the heart rate and the, uh, the, the inspiratory muscles, the diaphragm and the external intercostal uh, muscles contract faster, we increase the uh, respiratory rate, uh, the frequency of respiration, and we can return back to normal these, uh, the composition, the chemical composition of blood. We will increase the oxygen concentration, we're getting rid of, of more CO2, and we're going bringing back to normal the pH of blood. That's put in simple terms. So this is how we finish the, uh, this chapter, Respiratory System. See you.